Hello everyone, we are going to go over a couple of questions from the regions today and we're going to start with quadratic formula. To use the quadratic formula is super easy, you just copy down the quadratic formula, it's given on the reference sheet so you can't ask for anything else. It is right there when it says to solve algebraically for the exact values of x and you're looking at a coefficient in front of that x squared uh, of a number that is greater than 1 and it's a 6 right now. You don't know what to do. Quadratic formula to the rescue. All right. The one thing that you do have to remember that you have to identify what the a, b, and c are according to the equation that they give you. So I'm just going to write them down. A equals 6. B equals 5. And just remember the number is with the, the sign that is right before it. So that is a negative 6 for the C. So then I'm just going to rewrite the quadratic formula. It doesn't hurt. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of 4ac. Sorry, got my, got ahead of myself there. b squared minus 4ac minus 2a. All right, so now we're going to just substitute those numbers in. When you substitute those numbers in, just remember, if it says negative b and b is a positive, it's a negative 5. If b was a negative, it becomes a positive if you're substituting it in. All right, so it's plus or minus. The b squared goes inside parentheses even if it's positive. Just put everything that you're substituting in inside the parentheses. So the 4 is there times the a which is 6 I'm putting in parentheses and times the c which is negative 6 and I'm going to put that in parentheses as well and then that is over 2 times a which is 2 times 6 and that's the way it should look okay you grab your calculator next thing that you do underneath this square root right here starting with the 5 squared you put that directly into your calculator the way you wrote it down with the parentheses and all minus 4 times 6 in parentheses times negative 6 in parentheses do not put the square root inside the calculator with that it is not for that okay we're not taking the square root of that number we're just going to get what this is equal to and rewrite it so it is equal to 169 i'm going to rewrite it negative 5 plus or minus square root of 169 over and i'm going to put the the whole thing over 12. all right so now I am going to go back to the calculator and check to see if the square root of 169 is a perfect square. If it is, it makes it a lot easier for me. It is. So the square root of 169, I'm going to put it over here, is 13. So that means it is a perfect square. And they want the exact values for this question. So I am just going to go ahead and rewrite x equals negative 5 plus or minus 13 over 12. And that's exactly what um, I have there. Now, just remember, this is a parabola, and it's going to cross twice, the cross the x-axis twice. So I'm going to rewrite two equations here from this one equation. It's really just one. It looks like one, but it's two. So it's negative 5 plus 13, right? Negative 5 plus 13 over 12. And this side is x equals negative 5 minus 13 over 12. So really all you have to do now is to just put this directly into the calculator using your alpha x your fraction symbol so that is negative 5 plus 13 
on the top as the numerator and as the denominator divide by 12. And then you have two thirds. All right, that's exact two thirds. X equals two thirds. Let's go see what the other one looks like. And they wanted the exact values. So I'm going to put X alpha X. And then this is negative 5 minus 13 and over 12. And that is negative 3 over 2. These are the exact values. These are the answers. And that's it. That's the quadratic formula. Taking a look at it. The thing that you have to remember about the quadratic formula, just take one step at a time. Make sure that when you're substituting numbers in, that you're putting them into parentheses, especially with the negatives involved. And there will always be negatives involved. Um, just make sure that, especially with this right here, when people do not put the b squared in parentheses, and it's a, and it happens to be a negative, um, they will always get that incorrect. All right, so just be very, very careful with that. All right, so just to go back down and just show you those answers once again. Um, those are the two answers. They're exact. You answered the question, and you can move on to the next. All right, so this little jumping to another region here, um, and we're jumping to not June 2023. This was January 2023. In this one, in this question, they are saying to use the quadratic formula. So that's great. And so you just go to the reference sheet and you are, are just going to pick out that quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is there. Just rewrite it on your page. It won't be like that. But I'm just going to put x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by all divided by 2a then over here put a equals this is a 1 so I'm going to put a 1 b equals negative 4 that's your b and this is your c your constant is your c is 1 so now once you have all that set up you're going to substitute in that's all you have to do this B is negative already. This is what I'm, what I was saying. So a negative, a negative, the negation of negative, a negative number already is positive. So if you were substituting this in, it would be negative and then negative four in parentheses. I'm not going to, well, I'll, re I'll rewrite it like that. Um, but you see negative and negative, that's a positive. You can change it right away. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to just, Put that negative negative in they want a the way they want the b the negation of b and if b is negative already it becomes a positive so that is four instead of negative four plus minus the square root of b squared remember negative four goes in parentheses squared minus four times a which is one times c which is one that's nice and easy and then 2 times 1, which is 2, and I'm just going to put that there. So do you see, like, if you're reading this question, it says round the solutions to the nearest hundredth. Right away, I know whatever is underneath the square root, I, am, I know that is not going to be a perfect square. So I'm just going to be aware that once I put that in, this right here underneath, um, I know that's not going to be a perfect square, but let's go ahead and put that in. I'm going to put the negative 4 in parentheses squared minus 4 times 1 and then times 1 again in parentheses. And I'm going to see that that is 12. So I knew that it was not going to be a perfect square. I'm going to move down here and rewrite. X equals just one step. And I'm rewriting square root of 12. And I know that is over 2 times 1, which is 2. 
See, that's how you have to kind of get it together. Take that one step, figure out what's underneath the radical, put that number underneath the radical. They want it rounded to the nearest hundredth. So this now, I'm going to split this up because square root of 12, um, I don't want, I don't want to write that. I don't want to take what the square root of 12 is until the end of my problem. So I'm going to rewrite this right now as two separate equations. So I'm going to put x equals 4 plus square root of 12 over 2. And then I'm going to put x equals 4 minus square root of 12 over 2. I'm now going to grab my calculator and I'm going to put alpha x and then I'm going to put 4 plus square root of 12 and I'm going to put that all over 2 and I'm going to press enter and it is 3.732. All right, so 3.732 and I'm going to round it to the nearest hundred. So I'm going to put x equals, and I'm going to put the squiggly equal sign for it, like as an approximation. Um, x equals 3.73, and that's going to stay at 3. And that's rounded to the nearest hundredth. Then I'm going to do the same here, but I need my calculator. I'm going to press alpha x again. And then instead of 4 plus, I'm going to put 4 minus the square root of 12. And that is over 2. Enter. And now it is 0 0.2. And let me just bring that up again. 2, 6. No, it doesn't stay at 2, 6. It actually goes up to 2, 7 because this number right here is a number that is greater than, is equal or greater than 5. All right, so that go, becomes a 0.27 rounded to the nearest hundred. So this answer right here and this answer right here. You use the quadratic formula to solve for the roots. And that is how you do it. All right, pretty easy. Just a couple of things that you have to remember like that I mentioned. And that's about it. All right. Thank you for watching. Hope that helped. See you next time.